Michael Chavis has strained his oblique muscle. If you're unfamiliar with Chavis, he is the number one prospect in the Red Sox farm system. He's 22 years of age and was Boston's first round pick in 2014, although he was there at the age of 18. This was when he was you know, brought into the team in the what 26 pick. In 2017 with Salem, he hit 318 and slugged a ridiculous 641. Now, you know, keep in mind that's like JD Martinez, Mike Trout, you know, slugging wise, even higher. So that's ridiculous. I mean, of course, it's at a lower level. Oh, I should probably also mention that he had an OPS of over a thousand as well. I mean, that's looking at David Ortiz postseason numbers in 2013. Like, just kind of showing you like what it's like that most people would know. One issue, you know, he walked 19 times and he struck out 57. Now, that's pretty much baseball today. You either hit a dinger or you strike out. But, you know, the Red Sox really aren't that team, and you're looking for a hitter. I mean, you want to look for a hitter that, you know, can can get on base, not only by hitting, you know, hitting the ball, but by also taking, you know, um, working the, the pitcher, you know, with pitches. I mean, you know, that's how uh, Alex Cora wants his, you know, batters to be this season, you know. He also wants more power. Of course, wants more power. That's why they brought in Gina Martinez. But, and, yeah, that was in 59 games. So he struck out 57 times in 59 games. In double A with Portland, he hit 250 and slugged 492. Now, although that's not the same as he did in Class A, that's still pretty, you know, decent. I mean, and yeah, he had 62 hits and 32 of them for extra bases. So, um, in these clips, I have to give credit to Baseball Senses, Jason Woodell. I don't know if that, um, you'll see the him in the cage later hitting. I'm not sure if that's Jason's, uh, you know, original footage, but if it is, then I, you know, I'm giving credit in Mass Live and the MLB. Now, most likely, if you're seeing this video, the video, you know, this video was, is put up, but, you know, for some reason, if this page ever, you know, this YouTube channel every, ever grows, I really can't use any of these clips. Like, it's going to be hard to make videos because I need permission, you know, like, now nobody cares what I'm doing because I'm not popular, but, so that's why I'm giving credit. So, on Sunday, um, this isn't true, uh, so basically, Michael, you know, Chavis, he detailed his left oblique muscle, and he said this was the first injury, you know, oblique injury that he's ever had in his career. He said it, you know, it's very sensitive injury, and he's taking things slowly. He's not rushing to come back. You know, if you look at the Red Sox, I mean, Mookie Betts, Xander Bogarts, you know, those two guys are the biggest ones. Pedroia, they all played through injuries, and they all were on injuries last year, and that's why they didn't really perform that well come the playoffs. You know, it's a long season. I would have preferred, you know, I mean, Bogart said himself that he wanted to play through it, you know, his injury, because he didn't want to, you know, the last thing he wants to do, and this is quote, basically paraphrasing what he said, was he doesn't want to sit on the bench and watch his team, you know, lose games or not perform as well when he's not there. But, you know, me personally, if the Red Sox had, you know, I mean, if those guys don't play, the Red Sox don't make the playoffs. I mean, the Yankees were only two games behind them. And if the Red Sox had to play a wild card game against the Twins, I mean, who would they have gone with? I mean, Sale and Pomeranz, um, they, pro they would have went with Sale, but, you know, would he have been able to perform at, you know, the level he had, you know, the whole season? I don't, I don't think so. I really don't. I think Sale was overworked, and I really hope the Red Sox pitching staff is looking into that. Of course they are, but we already know, so... And uh, Chava said it was a swing in an open cage. And I'm also letting you guys know of this because it seems like not a lot of people are talking about, you know, Chavis. And now that, you know, he has the injury, a lot it's coming out to the media. But this is a guy that I believe has an insane amount of potential. And he is the number one, you know, prospect in the system. He would have been on the Red Sox roster heading into the postseason. And I'm saying that because I'm confident in his ability. And he really has changed his game around from when he came in in 2014 as an 18 year old when he was paid nearly two million dollars so I mean if you're paying an 18 year old two million dollars at high school he has potential you know it's as simple as that so all of these you know guys do the kids I mean they're he's he's 22 but when he's brought in I mean I'm 19 so anybody didn't know that but it's didn't about me at all uh, this is like this is more of an open page I'm not you know I'm not here to you know be scientific and to look at, look at every detail this is for fun I'm not getting paid you know I don't work with the Red Sox you know I'm just a people person I'm a fan just like everybody watching this video so yeah uh, Brian Johnson I definitely want to get a video on him um, in the Red Sox pitching rotation okay so it was a swing in an open cage Chavez said I wish I had some information but it's kind of seeing how it feels when we come in every day but doing treatment doing as much as I can to get out there as soon as possible now I know I just said he wants to take things slowly but his goal of course is to come back as quick as possible but in a safe manner he doesn't want to come back and re-injure that you know oblique you know muscle tear you know that's a or yeah, was, yeah, would, or yeah that's the last thing you want because then you know you're looking at even more time out you know, he's looking at a midseason return, and if he comes back and he's healthy and he rakes, he may get, you know, he may get a September call-up. You, you just don't know. I mean, look at, you know, Devers and Benintendi, you know, what they were able to contribute, you know, what they are contributing at a young age. I mean, 
Benintendi would have been Rookie of the Year if it wasn't for Aaron Judge. And just, I honestly, by the, I'm being real. In that second half of the season, when Benintendi started heating up, I really thought that Benintendi should have got more votes. Should he have won it? No, absolutely not. Aaron Judge hit 50 what, 50 something home runs, 52 um, or 53 home runs. Benintendi hit 280. You know, he had a good year. I mean, he had a great year. So did Trey Mancini. You know, don't nothing takes away from him. He's going to be underlooked maybe his whole career because he's not on a big market team. But the Orioles, you know, they're not. They're not. You know, I don't know. I can't say for anything certain, but they're if they're looking to trade Machado, you know, something's not going right there. So, okay. So continuing on, uh, Chavis. If I, I'm trying not to say Chavez, I keep wanting to say Chavez. It's Chavis. He hit 31 home runs between High A and Double A last year. 2017 was a huge year in him for in terms of confidence. You can see in this interview right here with Nesson and Mass Live and some others, he's speaking about his consistency and how it wasn't there in his first few seasons. 2014, 15, and 16. 16, he was, he did put up some good numbers, but he wasn't, like I, you know, like I just said, he wasn't consistent about it. If you want to make the major leagues, you have to be consistent with your, you know, with your play. You know, if Chris Sill, you know, has a game where he goes eight innings and gives up, you know, one run and strikes out 12 batters, you know, that's great. But if the next game he comes in and he only goes five with like three strikeouts and, you know, seven hits and four runs, you know, he's, you know, he's not going to, you know, really, you know, he's not going to get any recognition. He's not even going to be on the team. I'm just saying Chris Sill, of course, that's not, doesn't, that's not Chris Sill. I mean, he's one of the most consistent pitchers around. I mean, you know, what if he had 300 strikeouts? That's <laughs> ridiculous. But so heading into the, 2017, you know, he was ranked ninth in Boston system, and this is why I like, you know, Chavis so much is because of his hard work and dedication. I really haven't seen, you know, anybody work as hard as him in the, you know, Red Sox farm system, maybe ever. I mean, Yoel Mankata is all, he's a whole other story. He really, you know, has insane amount of potential, but he has to, you know, he has to get better, and I wish him the best of luck, but we will look back on that trade later on, but for right now, the Red Sox absolutely won that. There was also some others in that trade, you know, uh, uh, I'm blanking out on his name. Um, the the relief pitcher that throws uh, Michael Kopech. You know he. I'm a fan of him, but he doesn't really have much other than the fastball. So not too big of a loss. And they got Chris Sale, who was you know the sec finished second in Cy Young voting. So for the AL behind Corey Kluber. Corey Kluber didn't play. He came in later in the season, but he dominated. And he was consistent. He he didn't pitch well in the playoffs either, but neither did Sale. So well, Sale did in the bullpen role, but. So he started off in Salem by hitting .38, you know, 318, and slashing 641 in 250 plate appearances. He had a 187 WRC, if that's plus, if that's pronounced correctly. And Mike Trout had a 171. I was just looking into that into the Stanton versus Martinez. So pitcher, you know, him playing as efficient as Mike Trout in the field. I don't. He's a pretty good fielder. Mike Trout is a, one of the best in the game, you know, maybe ever at fielding. He doesn't, he's not, you know, Mike Trout is not going to get any, that many gold gloves because of how many competition there are. Center field, if you play center field, you have to be good at defense. You know, you have to be athletic, quick. You don't need to be, you don't need to be able to jump over a wall and rob a home run, but you have to have a good instinct for the game. So, I mean, look at Bradley Jr., Byron Buxton, Kevin Kiermaier, Kevin Pillar, Mike Trout, you know, the list can go on and on and on. There's so many good defensive center fielders. So, and yeah, and this also is the minors. So, you know, there's a difference between playing in, you know, double A, you know, high A than, than the major leagues. The major leagues is, you know, that's where the, you know, where, it, you know, your, your journey begins really. I mean, not really begins, but that's like where it starts getting, you know, serious. You know, you got to step up. So mid-season, he was promoted to Portland. This is in 2017. And he, you know, like I said, mentioned before in the beginning, his numbers weren't as good, but he still put up 114 WRC plus and 274 plate appearances. Um, you know, if you look at it like a 130-ish a around that area, you know, Anthony Rizzo, you know, so that's still pretty good. I mean, it's 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 solid, you know, compared to what he had in 14, 15, and 16, 2017 was a huge year for Michael Chavis, to say the least. In 2018, he was invited to spring training, and he wasn't just invited to spring training. A lot of people don't know this, but he was actually invited into this... Um, Oh uh, yeah, it was called the. It's called the Boston's annual rookie development camp. It's designed for players that the team believes are close to the major leagues, and he was one of the ten prospects that accepted that. So you know this, you know this guy. I keep calling him Colin McKay. This, you know this guy, you know that nobody really knows about. And of course, people know his name, but they don't understand of how much potential he has. You know, Michael Chavis has you know the potential to be the best player on the Red Sox someday. And if and you're looking at it in a few years, he's that special. Aggression is absolutely there for Chavis, who hit 226 with 16 home runs in 2014, 2015, 81 games. He hit 236 with just eight home runs in 2016 he focused a lot more on being more consistent which worked somewhat but you know overall he had good games bad games and it 
never clicked until 2017. He's expected to play third and first for the future. He is working on first base with Sam Travis in the minor leagues right now. Obviously, Rafael Devers is playing third right now. Mitch Moreland's back on a deal, you know, a new deal. What is it, a two-year deal? So, you know, there's a, not a lot of space for him. But, you know, if you're tearing it up in the minor leagues, you will play in the big leagues. And that's not saying he's going to take somebody's spot. But, you know, having a guy like Chavis who can, you know, he can field, he can run, he can hit. Doesn't have blazing speed or, you know, Manny Machado-like glove. But, you know, he can contribute a lot to a postseason run. I mean, look at Xander Bogarts back in 2013, you know, how big he was. He can, you know, Chavis can play a similar role. This is your bet to believe. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. I'll let you know that tomorrow I will be dropping a video about, you know, the, how good are the Red Sox compared to all the rest of the teams in baseball. If you have, and also I'll talk about their lineup and their pitching staff, um, who's going to fill in that, you know, fifth rotation spot. You know, um, Eduardo Rodriguez and Stephen Wright are both not expected to be back for opening day. So, you know, I'm, I'm honestly going to predict that Brian Johnson gets that role. But he has, you know, an issue. Um, uh, he has like a mental issue where he can't really, you know, focus that well throughout a whole season. So I don't know how that's going to work out. But regardless, Brian Johnson is a very talented pitcher. You remember he threw that shutout last year. It was last year. It was last year. Uh, they had a great game. So you bet to believe. Leave a like, please. And if you're enjoying my channel, then tell your friends. I appreciate it so much. You know, I love doing YouTube. I love talking about the Red Sox. I love the Red Sox. I love the fans. Um, it's all, you know, I'm a fan too. I don't put myself above anybody i'm a fan whether i have thousands of followers or not on instagram it doesn't matter to me i'm just i'm here to um to help you know push the community forward you know the red sox are the by far the best fan base that i've 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 t like a ton of teams i mean i'm uh i like the knicks the rockets you know um colts you know i've never seen a fan base like the red sox the, the only one that comes close is the knicks but you know even some Knicks fans are just ridiculous you know red sox you know i love boston so much i want to be there when i'm older guys leave a like bye